Hello, my beautiful people. Welcome back to another gorgeous spring day in the garden. Uh, today we're using some very happy colors, beautiful, bright springtime colors. When I drive my girls to school, we're kind of in horse country over here, so there's and farm country, so there's a lot of fields and meadows. And uh, one of the meadows recently just kind of burst into bloom with these amazing yellow flowers, and it was so beautiful. And every morning when we were driving, the kids were like, "Oh, mommy, look, mommy, look!" So. That's kind of the inspiration for the yellow that I'm using. Um, also, you know, spring is coming, Easter's coming. We wanted to do some bright, happy colors for you guys. So what I want to do technique-wise, hello, Baxter. Baxie has been <laughs> roaming around. <laughs> um, we're going to be doing a pearl pour along with a blown out pour. So I don't know if you guys saw the last one we did was the Edge of Madness. That was actually right here. Let me show you. Drying beautifully. <laughs> So this one was the blown out perimeter edge. I love this part. Can you see that edge, right? How cool that is. And then we had the ring pour in the middle. And the problem I thought with this one was that I had too much paint in here and we ended up tilting off too much of that. So I don't want to do a ring pour today, but I do want to do this blown out perimeter and I do want to do a pearl pour. So I might do half of it as a pearl pour on a diagonal and the other half, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see what happens. We'll see. I have a vague idea of what I want to do. We'll see where it takes us. This is a 24 by 30 inch gallery rack canvas. I like this size a lot. Not quite as big and cumbersome as a 24 by 36, but still lots of room to play. Looks fantastic hanging up on your walls. I encourage you guys to try the 24 by 30 inch size if you have not previously. Now, let me show you my colors. This one is taped and pinned and kind of warped, which kind of made me mad. That's annoying, but it'll be all right. I have painted the sides and edges with one of my colors, the Quinacridone Violet from Goldens. So let's start with that one. Everything is mixed with Liquitex Gloss Medium and Floetrol and a lot of water tonight. So those of you who know me and watch regularly know I like my paint on the thicker side. This is pretty darn thin for me. When it runs off the stick, it is not leaving a mound. It is pretty much just sinking into itself right off the bat. And like I said, Liquitex Gloss Medium, about an ounce, about an ounce of paint, stir those two up together, add Floetrol to about here, and then I added water incrementally until it was this consistency that I wanted. So those of you who have thin Floetrol, pearl pores are a great way to use up your thin Floetrol. So that's our Quinacridone Violet from Golden. Then we are using Amsterdam Permanent Blue Violet. Um, but I took a tip from my friend Gina DeLuca the other day. She did a gorgeous pour and she was using dioxazine purple and talking about how it dries so dark that it almost looks black and just adding a tiny bit of white to this will brighten it up and make it not so dark so that it actually will dry purple. So we've done that tonight. Literally, I just picked some paint up off my stick, drizzled it into this cup and stirred it up. So it's a little bit lighter than the dark, dark, dark solid color, but that's the permanent blue violet from Amsterdam. Okay. And then we have this lovely one. This is Quinacridone Rose. Yes. Quinacridone Rose from Amsterdam also. Beautiful color. What's he chewing on? A chair. A chair? I'm chewing on the chair. <laughs> okay. So again, not leaving any kind of mound, just sinking pretty much into itself right off the bat. And I have added a lot of water to get them to this consistency. Okay. The next one we are using is a bit of a mashup. This is started as Golden's Pyrrole Orange, and it was eye-poppingly bright. And I wanted a little bit of sparkle in there, so I added a little bit of this little piggy pigments in Horizon. So what I had done was I mixed up the Liquitex Gloss Medium and the paint. I mixed those two together. I added my Floetrol. I added some water. I decided I wanted the Horizon in there. So I took one of these little five ounce cups. I put about a teaspoon of alcohol in there, the isopropyl alcohol. I put a nice big scoop of Horizon in the alcohol. I mixed those together till the pigments were dispersed and then I poured it right into my Liquitex Floetrol mixture. Otherwise so, known as the Tipsy Piggy? No. Tipsy oh. Piggy, well, Kind of, yeah, I guess so. Tipsy Piggy originally was using mixed pour, but this is not mixed. This is Liquitex Gloss Medium. But yes, in terms of dispersing the pigments in the isopropyl alcohol, yes. So that is a variation on the Tipsy Piggy. 
Again, not leaving any kind of mound on a mound, just sinking into itself. That's the Pyrrole Orange and Horizon. And I really like this one from TLP. It's such a beautiful color. Okay, next, we're almost done. <laughs> Wait a minute, I had added, to, oh, I forgot to tell you, to the Blue Violet, I had added Nightfall. Now that's another, this little piggy color. This one is gorgeous. Got a beautiful metallic shift on there and a nice Blue Violet shade. So that was added with the alcohol to the Liquitex Floetrol mixture. So those are my two piggies tonight, Horizon and Nightfall. So there's a little bit of sparkle in this one too. Okay, and then the last color color we're using is this lovely, bright, happy, cheerful darling. This is Azo Yellow Lemon from Amsterdam. Kinda loud, kinda bright, <laughs> but that's okay. That's what we're kind of going for. So, um, I think I did add one scoop of white, not scoop, but just like drizzled some white off my stick just to tone it down just a smidge because it was like I needed sunglasses practically. Okay, and then we have our usual suspects, Amsterdam Titanium White with just a tiny bit of the white satin enamels in there. And I do mean tiny. I mean like literally scooped some on my stick and put it into the already full cup. So you don't need a lot of the satin enamels. I like to put it in there because it does sometimes make cells. It also gives some of the cells that cloudy, poofy, softer, angelic, cherubic look, which I enjoy. So that's our white. And then I thought I was done and then I was like, I don't have any gold. So <laughs> I found the tub of gold that was left over and I added more Floetrol to it. This one is still a smidge thicker than everything else. And actually we're gonna thin that down right now. Add some water, stir it up. So he's not like gonna chew up your chair in any way that you're gonna fall over anytime, right? I'm not gonna fall over, no. Okay. Still don't think it's a good idea to let him eat the chair. Mm. Okay. So that's our 24 karat gold. Okay. So, game plan, I think. We're gonna do the pearl pour first. And then in the areas where we don't get as much cell action, I want to use the leaf blower, my Makita mini cordless leaf blower, to blow out some of the parts where we didn't get as much cell action. First, we're going to start with our pearl pour. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put down a nice puddle of this gold. And then we're going to start layering our colors for our cells, hopefully. Um, we're going to use some of that beautiful quinacridone violet. And then we're going to come into the pyrrole orange with the horizon. That's so pretty already. Look at this! <laughs> I get such a kick out of this. It's so funny. Some of our azo lemon yellow. A little bit of white. Some of our quinacridone rose. We're going to use some of our permanent blue violet. I think I'm going to put another shot of the quinacridone violet and another shot of gold. And that puddle, that's a gigantic puddle. <laughs> and now we're going to put some white on top. Hello, Bax. If you stay over here, you're going to get covered in paint, buddy. No, leave it. Back up. Back up. Back up. This is mommy's space. You can't stay here while I'm pouring. <laughs> Back up. Maybe you want a second. Go see It's a little color too. Yeah, right? Sit. Sit. He was sitting here watching me pour, the, stir the paint. It's pretty funny. Okay, so are you ready, husband of awesomeness? Yes, ma'am. We're going to tilt this out to all four corners fairly quickly. And the object being that we want to stretch it out over the canvas and get a very thin layer of these surface colors so that the colors underneath start to sell through. All right, obviously, I think we're going to go that corner first. Are you ready, husband of awesomeness? Yes, my love. Right. Here we go. So we're going to go over there and come back. And then we're going to go this way and come back, back to the center. Now we're going to go down off of this side and come back. And we're going to go down off of that side. Okay. It's really 
good. Come back towards the center. I'm gonna keep tilting this because it's still moving a lot. And you're starting to get some cells over in that corner. A little bit too much paint over here. We're gonna let that run off. run down because we don't want to have too much paint on here we want this fairly thin so that any cells we have can pop through like it's starting to happen up there which is pretty cool okay. so that's good now we're going to go back down this way and stretch out this top edge so that we can get some cells popping up through there also That's looking pretty cool. I love that look happening up there. Oh, there's those pyro orange cells popping up through the purple. Okay, we're just gonna give this a second to percolate. As Gina Deluca says, actually, I'm gonna take this little edge and just cover this bottom edge over here. Just because it's a little uneven. These are so cool. Can you see those, HOA? Oh, yeah. All right. Let's give this a torch. It seems like it takes a lot longer to get thin paint off my hands. <laughs> <laughs> like it just keeps pushing it around instead of... That's fine. Okay. Let's torch this. For those of you who are new to pouring, torching using the heat that the torch provides allows the cells, that, the colors that are denser, that have sunk to the bottom, if they have air bubbles in them, it pops the air bubbles with the heat and allows those colors to come to the surface, which is what's happening in here and, and in here, and ends up giving us these really beautiful little cells. So you want to torch your painting after you've finished tilting it because you want to have those air bubbles coming up. You don't, if you did not torch, you would probably either get little bubbles while it's drying, you would see like little bumps, or if they start to pop and then they do pop, you could see a divot or a, like an indentation, neither of which is awesome. So this is a much better option. Use your torch carefully, have a fire extinguisher standing by. <laughs> don't set anything on fire. <laughs> you hold your torch high, do circles, distributing the heat evenly, not burning your paint okay this is looking pretty cool i love this i don't want to do anything over here i love what's happening over here i think it's going to end up looking really really cool so we do have this area over here where we could keep as the negative space if we wanted to use a stencil or something i don't think i do want to do that i do want to use the leaf blower today and blow out a design so hoa at this point I need to decide where I want to do that. I could lay down some colors here along this edge and blow out that way, which would be kind of cool. I think that sounds excellent. You think that sounds good? Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to turn this this way. I'm not going to do anything up in here because I really like what's happening. We're just going to play along this edge and blow out some color this way. Okay, so first I want to put down of that pyro orange horizon color and we're going to follow the natural lines that are there to make it a little bit more organic looking okay put a little bit of yellow in there and we seem to have lost all of our yellow except for right along here on the edge and then we're going to put some of that quinacridone violet on there I'm 
not really touching the other colors because I want them to blow on top of this. white along this side kind of for it to blow onto and move easily let's put a little bit of gold in there also okay I think I want a little bit more of this husband of awesomeness. Let's see. Let's turn this this way more. So I think we're going to start over here actually. And I don't know if you guys saw the pour I did that was inspired by Tiffany Remind, but she had this very cool technique where she used the blow dryer and instead of doing like longer, straighter, she kind of turned it a lot and made beautiful patterns. So I kind of wanted to play with that also. So we're going to start over here, HOA, yeah? Yeah. Are you ready, husband of awesomeness? I am ready. Here we go. So when you're using the, the any kind of blower, the first pass is always your best bet. The more you blow it, the more it's going to blend, the more you're going to end up with a muddyish sort of coloring. So like in here, you can see it was one blow. We see all these individual colors. And then over here where it started to blend, it gets kind of murky. But I still really like that. And I like that pop of orange in there. These are a little blendy. That, whoop, that's a little blendy. I like these a lot and I love what's happening in here. So that's looking pretty cool. What do you think HOA? We're starting to get more cells popping up in there. Yeah. Okay. Let's torch this one more time. It's almost like a, a flower. What if you tilt it with that? No. No, no. I'm not tilting anymore at this point because A, the pretty pattern that we have going on here will get messed up if we tilt it. We would destroy these beautiful round cells. And these really cute round ones that are popping up would get all weird and wonky. We don't want that. I do think I'm going to take the blower and just go right over here a little bit because that one is bothering me.
So that's one of the things that I really like about the Makita cordless leaf blower rather than using a blow dryer is that progressive trigger. So if you notice, I was just pulling the trigger very, very, very gently and having it only have a little bit of air come out. Whereas with a blow dryer, you don't have that control. It's either on or off. But I really like that one. You can hit it hard and it'll blow or you can do it very gently and you'll get a very, very... I used to use that with my succulents to clean off my plants. <laughs> Okay, this is looking awesome. Let's torch it again. And we'll get hopefully more of these cells popping up and more in through here. But I love the way this is looking. I love that corner. That's just gorgeous. I'm loving what's happening here. This is kind of flower-like, which I guess fits in perfectly with our springtime theme that we had going and all the beautiful colors that we had in this pour are all represented here. And I like the white kind of negative space with all these pretty cells. <laughs> He's just going around in circles. <laughs> okay. What are you doing, Max? What you doing, baby? Okay. <laughs> Silly dog. Hey, baby. I don't want to get paint on you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, HOA and I appreciate you all so much. Please make sure you check out our Fluid Art Boutique website, fluidartboutique.com, and uh, check out our classes and our gallery because it's going to be a, a really awesome event. We are going to be in the Washington, D.C. area May 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Sarah Mack, Kathleen Osmore, Karen Dershon, and myself are all teaching three-hour classes. I'm teaching Wandering Straight Pours and Ring Pours, and we are also doing some stencils, some bonus stencils with this little piggy pigments. They're going to be really awesome and fun. Um, yeah, it's going to be really cool. I think Sarah's doing ninja swipes, Karen is teaching blooms, and she's also teaching a resin class, I believe. Kathleen is doing some amazing swiping techniques for us, so something for everybody. Go check it out fluidartboutique.com. Thank you, baby. All right, we'll see you real soon. <laughs> Actually, no, get out of there, silly dog. Silly puppy, come on. Okay. Did you paint on the floor? No. Okay, so this is good. HOA, would you take them for a tour? I love this part in here. That's the coolest thing right there. Woo! Like right there on the edge where there's those teeny tiny little orange cells popping up. This reminds me of that other pearl pour we did, the little one with the violet and all those pinkish colors coming through. These cells are really pretty too. I'm going to torch it one more time. I'll show you guys this one when it's dry. Thanks for being here with us. We wish you a beautiful springtime and we'll see you real soon. You're so excited about.